Range Dosing Orders, a Pharmacology Review 2021. The American Association of Critical Care Nurses and several other national nursing and hospital organizations recently advocated in the 2020 year for clarity in the JACO medication management standards, and in particular, for the ability of physicians orders to be utilizing range orders in the dosing of titratable medications. With this power in nursing, they were able to influence and uh, clarify these JACO standards, and it has recently been established that these range orders are permitted in medication titration order sets. The actual wording from JACO is that orders in which the dose or dosing interval varies over a prescribed range depending on the situation or the individual's status. Here at Sutter Medical Center, Sacramento, this has allowed our critical care physicians the opportunity to modify their standard ICU drip orders and allow an incremental dose to be written in a range format. The medications which you will soon see with this incremental dose range are dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, phenylephrine, and propofol. The five standard order requirements will not be altered. You will continue to see a starting dose, incremental dose, titration interval or uh, goal or parameter, and a maximum rate. The modification that you will notice in these particular orders is that the incremental dose is now written in a range format. What does this mean for nursing? Well, nursing can titrate to the most appropriate dose for each patient in each situation through our clinical assessment and observation of he hemodynamic trends. And this may occur possibly with less titration. As always with the titration of vasoactive and sedative medications, the nurse must have a clear understanding of the medication and how the use of each medicine must be individualized for each patient. As nurses, we should be able to answer four questions. Number one, what is the goal in the use of this medication? Are we seeking tissue perfusion? Are we seeking sedation? Number two, what is the target variable for this medication? It could be mean arterial pressure, heart rate, an SVO2 goal. Number three, is this medication attaining the desired goal of tissue perfusion or sedation when the target variable is achieved? And this is the importance of our clinical assessment. This is where we will be able to observe when we've reached that mean arterial pressure goal, are we actually seeing clinical signs of improved tissue perfusion? Number four, what effects of this medication may negatively impact the attained goal? So we did achieve our goal of a mean arterial pressure of 65. However, in using this specific medication, our heart rate is elevated to an extent that it's negatively affecting our cardiac output. These are all the types of questions that we are going to want to have in our mind as we are titrating our medications. So let's do a quick review of titratable vasopressors and how each uniquely affects a patient's pathophysiology. Let's start with the receptors that are affected by these medications. Receptors in the heart, lung, and blood vessels are the target for hemodynamic medications. The sympathetic nervous system has two major receptors, alpha and beta. The alpha receptors are located mostly in blood vessels throughout the body, while the beta receptors come in two types. Beta-1 is mostly found in the heart, and beta-2 is mostly found in the lungs the skeletal muscle, and the abdominal vis viscera. What activity occurs when these receptors are stimulated? Stimulation of the alpha receptor will result in purely vasoconstriction. 
the end result being an increase in afterload as measured by an increase in your systemic vascular resistance or your SVR. While stimulation of the beta-1 receptor causes three distinct effects, inotropic, meaning there will be an increased force of heart contraction, chronotropic, meaning there's an increasing rate of electrical firing leading to an increased heart rate, Andromotropic, meaning there's an increase in the conduction velocity of the action potential, and thus the impulse travels the electrical pathway more rapidly. With the beta-2 receptors, they may occasionally be affected as well, and these effects vary from beta-1, not only in the organs that these receptors primarily are located, but also in the results of their stimulation. Beta-2 receptors act on smooth muscle, causing relaxation or dilation. Bronchodilation, gastrointestinal, bladder or uterine muscle relaxation. An additional response of the beta-2 stimulation is blood glucose utilization is altered through increased mobilization of glucose and increased uptake by the target muscle cells. Most often, the target variable for vasopressors is mean arterial pressure, while the target variable for an inotropic medication is cardiac output or the cardiac index. Let's review their relationships. The mean arterial pressure is the product of cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance or TPR, total peripheral resistance. The cardiac output, in turn, is the product of stroke volume and heart rate. Stroke volume, remember, is the volume of blood ejected during each contraction and can be increased or decreased by preload, which we often measure with our CVP or pulmonary artery wedge pressures, contractility, and afterload, which is often measured by the SVR, the TPR, or our PVR, pulmonary vascular resistance. Remember how all of these variables interact with each other as we are titrating our medications. Preload, contractility, and afterload are influenced by the pathophysiologic dysfunction occurring in the body. Let's take a look at these shock states to see some examples. For instance, Septic shock results in decreased preload and afterload due to the vasodilation occurring by the inflammatory state. While in cardiogenic shock, contractility is reduced with increases in preload and afterload. A medication that stimulates the alpha receptor and increases the afterload further would place a heart in cardiogenic shock with limited ability to contract in a situation requiring it to work harder against that resistance, which it likely cannot do and would not be able to over overcome that resistance created by the increase in afterload. Each vasopressor and inotropic medication can be used precisely to meet the patient's entire hemodynamic profile and not just one variable. Please understand each medication for the effects it may have for your patient on variables that are currently within normal values. Accurate medication titration should be intended to correct an abnormal value with little or no effect on the normal hemodynamic values. Check out this table to understand a little more about each one of these medications and which effect they have on the variables. Also remember that sedation is not innocuous to a patient's hemodynamics. Propofol has the potential to have a profound impact on inotropic and chronotropic changes for your patient. In addition, please review the onset of action times, time of peak effect after administration has begun, and the half-life of these medications. Knowing the timing of action gives us an understanding of how the medication is working inside our patient as we titrate up or wean down on these medications. Monitor your patients and observe for trends in your clinical assessment that confirm the medication being actively titrated is indeed producing the desired effect for your patient. Adequate 
tissue perfusion, or sedation without hemodynamic compromise. Looking at your patient while titrating the medications will allow you to observe these trends. The following changes have been made to the order set that our critical care physicians will begin to use. So look for these incremental dose changes to be present in these medication orders for your patients soon. Notice that the interval for dose change has been modified for most of these medications also to allow for more precise dose changes at more frequent intervals if necessary. Overshooting and undershooting a titratable medication can further compromise our patient's hemodynamics. These orders are also intended to help reduce these large changes in our patient's vital signs while obtaining hemodynamic stability. Thank you for your time.